check, check. Check. Where's Gary? Gary!
Good morning. Good morning. Uh, making the announcements today. It's been a little chaotic. Uh, first off, the bulletin, the QR code is not working and not updated, and nor is our screen projector working. So it's a great start to the day. So if you need a bulletin, because you're not going to see it up there, Please let our ushers know we're in the process of scrambling to make more. So um, just raise your hand. I think the, yes, no? Okay. We'll get them for you, Denise. Yes, you need one? Okay. Give us a minute. I'll go back and <laughs> we'll figure that out. So that's the biggest announcement. Um, Jazz Night is back, and we have people selling um, Tickets in the, at the back table, if you need a, uh, some, they are $25 in person, $15 online. So we'll have some of our youth out there selling tickets afterward. Uh, let's see, we had bingo for pies on Thursday. I believe that was a success. And any other, uh, oh, I know, a big announcement. Uh, today is Commitment Sunday. Uh, at, uh, after our offering prayer, we'll have us, you can come up and bring your pledge card up, and we'll also have our food donations for those of you that brought food donations. If you need a copy of the pledge cards, we'll have our ushers hand those out at that time. And um, if you have any questions, let me know since I'm the stewardship chair. And I think is that it. Is there anything else I'm forgetting? I'm sure there's a bunch. Online pledging, Heidi, through Realm, maybe a reminder? Yes, you can do that as well. Um, in the letter that went out during the week, um, there were links. It's very easy to just do your pledge there, so you can do that. If you do not want to do a card, you can do both as well. I, I found it very easy to just pledge online. It's a few clicks, and you're done. So um, that's another option, or you can come up and bring a, a pledge card up as well. Um, the pledge card was in the letter, so if you brought that with, that's fine. Or, again, we'll have copies of those here. Any other announcements that I'm forgetting to make? Okay. Oh, our usher is bringing copies of the bulletin. Very good. All right. Thank you. My name is Javier. I am here uh, because Pastor asked me to. He is younger and more handsome than I am. <laughs> but hey, that's what you have today. Today is also not only the 25th Sunday after Pentecost. Today is also Christ the King. Today is the last day of the liturgical year, and we celebrate Christ as our King. Can we say amen? Amen. amen. So from next Sunday on, the liturgical year begins with Advent. And we'll have four Sundays before Christmas. So it's a nice, it's one of my favorite seasons of the year. So let's begin our worship today with confession and forgiveness. Please stand if you are able. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God, presence of God and of one another. Have mercy on us, O God.
our God, who makes all things new, forgives your sins for Jesus' sake, and remembers them no more. Lift, lift up your heads and your hearts. Yours is the kingdom of God. Amen. You may be seated. We have, uh, do we have kids today? Yes, we have a couple of kids. Come. It says a children's message here. Whoa, whoa. I think I'm in problems today. One, two, three. All oh, boys. Oh, my God. That's good. Hello. What's your name? Your name? I like your glasses. They are pretty. And you? And I like your mask. And you? Matthew. Matthew. I have something for you. I, am, I don't know if I will have enough. I will ask God to multiply the food. <laughs> I was going to give, bring you candy, but my wife told me that I needed healthier <laughs> snacks. You like it? Uh, <laughs> I like them. What just, what just I did? What just I did to you? Do you pay for that? Did, did you give me money for that? Did I ask for something from you for me to give you the candy? It was what? Free. It is free. And you know, there's another guy that gave us life for free. Do you know who he is? God, who? God. God give us candy for free. We don't have to pay. Nothing. We have to do nothing. And he bring us things. And when someone give you things for free, what do you say? Thank you. Thank you. So what do we do as kids, parents, Grandparents to God when God gives us free things. What do we say to God? Thank you. So that's the sermon for today. <laughs> say thank you to the Lord because the Lord gave you your life and happiness and nice hair <laughs> for free. Can we pray? Let, let's stand. And let's take our hands. You can, give you, you can give the candy to your mother if you don't like it. Let's pray. Dear God, thank you for the things you give us. We live in gratitude forever and ever. Amen. Thank you for being here today.
stand if you are able? Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, you anointed, anointed your beloved son to be priest and sovereign forever. Grant that all the people of the earth, now divided by the power of sin, may be united by the glorious and gentle rule of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Our first reading today is from Revelation chapter 1, verses 4b through 8. Revelation chapter 1, beginning at the fourth verse. Grace to you and peace from him who is and who was and who is to come and from the seven spirits who are before his throne and from Jesus Christ, the faithful witness, the firstborn of the dead, and the ruler of the kings of the earth. To him who loves us and freed us from our sins by his blood and made us to be a kingdom, priests serving his God and Father, to him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Look, he is coming with the clouds. Every eye will see him, even those who pierced him. And on his account... All the tribes of the earth will wail. So it is to be. Amen. I am the Alpha and the Omega, says the Lord God, who is and who was and who is to come, the Almighty. Word of God, word of life. The Gospel of our Lord according to John, the 18th chapter. Pilate entered the headquarters again, summoned Jesus and asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus answered, Do you ask, do you ask this on your own, or did others tell you about me? Pilate replied, I am not a Jew, am I? Your own nation and the chief priests have handed you over to me. What have you done? Jesus answered, my kingdom is not from this world. If my kingdom were from this world, my followers will, will be fighting to keep me from being handed over to the Jews. But as it is, my kingdom is not from here. Pilate asked him, so you are a king? Jesus answered, you say that I am a king. For this I was born, and for this I came into the world, to testify the truth. Everyone belongs to the truth, listens to my voice. The Gospel of the Lord. Lord. You may be seated. You know, in my community, the Latinx community, you can easily pray for an hour. So if I go like over 45 minutes, raise, raise your hand and then I will stop. <laughs> Grace to you from our Lord Jesus Christ, the second person of the Holy Trinity. How do you live your life?
What is the foundation of your, your and our lives? What is the energy that fuels our work, our love, our thoughts, and our actions? For real. Not what we say we do. Because sometimes what we say and what we do are different. It's different. In our everyday life. Think for a moment of this place of your being where nobody enters. You know that you have that. There is a place in your being where nobody enters. Not your spouse, your children, your mother, your father, your grandmother, your grandfather, no one but you. That place that nobody but you really know. And ask yourself, and I will ask myself, what is the foundation of my life? What is the energy that fuels my love, my work, my thoughts, my actions? You know, that's what Pontius Pilate asked Jesus. Are you king? That is what we all celebrate today. Christ the King, Jesus is our King. Jesus is the foundation of our lives, the energy that fuels our love, our thoughts, our work, and actions. Can you say amen? amen. That's what we are celebrating today. That's what we celebrate every Sunday. The resurrection of our Lord. Jesus Christ is our King. Our Savior. Mexican says, the mero mero. The, the very one with authority. But how come? How can Jesus do this? It's, easy, it's very easy to say it. But how can Jesus be our king? How can Jesus be the energy and foundation, foundation of our being? It may be contradictory, but it is not. Jesus is king because Jesus gives us freedom. It is a king that they go give us freedom. And by giving us freedom, Jesus is our king. But you see, it is real freedom. That kind of simplistic and easy freedom that is so common in our society that is I will do whatever I want, whenever I want, wherever I want it. I'm not talking about that freedom. That is, by the very definition, the definition of sin in our denomination. To do whatever I want, whenever I want it, to whoever I want to. That is not freedom. And if we live by that affirmation, we will be Providing pain and suffering to many, many people and to us and to ourselves. Jesus gives us real freedom. Freedom from something and freedom for something else. You see, we have we have this, this book, the uh, the the 
Book of Concord. That's a collection of seven treatises that our denomination gathered in 1580. One of them, the most important one, is the Oxford Confession. You know that. This is Lutheranism 101. The, Luther, the, the Oxford Confession was presented in 1513 to the emperor and to the pope. And it has the Lutheran understanding of faith and Christianity. And it says in the second article, this is what, what Jesus liberates us from and the conundrum, the human problem that you and myself are in. It says, we teach that since the fall of Adam, all men, all human beings, begotten in the natural way, are born in sin. That is, this is the definition of sin. Without the fear of God, doing whatever we want, whenever we want to, wherever we want to, to whoever we want. Humans, we are without the fear of God, Without trust in God and with concupiscence. You are there, I am there. We cannot love God above all things by ourselves. We can't. If we can, then Jesus is not necessary. You know in your life that you try to do things, you try to behave, and sometimes you can't. Paul says, whatever I want to do, I can't, and whatever I don't want to do, I end up doing it. Have you been in that position? Trying to behave, trying to have good thoughts. And somehow, somehow, something happens. We cannot love God about all things by ourselves. We live in concupiscence. That's like a difficult word. Because in society, in, in, in the Western tradition, concupiscence has been related to sexuality. But that word does not mean only sexuality. Concupiscence comes from the Latin, concupiscere. And it has a prefix and a suffix. You know what that is? A word before it and another after it. And those prefix and suffix it brings to the world a continuity and an intensity of doing that thing forever and ever and ever. Desire. Concupiscence is to desire something and to live trying to have that something forever and forever eternally. A kind of eternal infatuation. That's sin. And it can be money, fame, beauty, my wife, my kids, my ideology, from one spectrum to the other, my trying to behave and for others to think that I am a good person in church. Whatever is your most important thing that in actuality and in practice and every, in everyday life, it is the most important thing that you want to do it over and over and over again. That's your God. That's your idol, my idol. I have been praying for hair for so long. <laughs> 
So we live in this place. We are slave to sin. We cannot do it. And, and sin is not to be a criminal. Sin is not to be a bad person. Sin is this kind of condition in which we are in our lives. That we want to behave, but we can't. That we want things, and sometimes those things in practice are a substitution for God. And they turn out to be God to us. So we need to be free from that. Not from this simplistic thing that we... TV and the news and everything else define as freedom. That, that's, that's, that's not. That's not it. Jesus free us from that. Jesus, free us from that. The article 4 in the Oxford Confession says, we are freely justified for Christ's sake. It, that is, that concupiscence that we have, Jesus free us from that for Christ's sake through faith. Our sins are forgiven for Christ's sake. By his death, this faith got input, input. It's a, it's a 1600 word for righteousness. That is, all the good that is in Christ, all the perfection that it is in Christ, Christ give us to you for free. And then you have the strength and then you have the possibility. And then you have the actuality to live and love God above all things. Like Jesus Christ, God the Father above all things. That is the forgiveness of sins that I announced at the beginning of worship. So, Jesus freed us from sin. That is the kind of freedom that you have. And now you can be whoever you want. You can do whatever you want to do because you are free in Christ. You can go to college. You can open a business. You can come to church. You can love your kids. You can love your spouse. You can create community because what the energy for that is not your selfishness, our selfishness, but Christ's love. That's freedom, don't we? Don't you think that? You owe nothing to no one. Not even to yourself. Jesus forgives Everything, including all that you have in that special place. Don't worry about that. You think no one knows about that? Jesus knows. And you know what he did? He forgives you. So this is the freedom. You are justified. My question now is, what can I do now? If, if I don't have to negotiate, do business with God for my salvation, if my salvation is that kind of freedom for free, what can I do now? How about saying, thank you, Lord. I think that's enough. Can you say, thank you, Lord. The life of a Christian from our Lutheran perspective is a life in gratitude. Because God did such a wonderful miracle in our life. God did such a wonderful thing in our life and Christ gave us 
such a wonderful gift of freedom that we have nothing else to do but to say thank you. You see, I, I like Disney movies. Do you like do you like Disney movies? I think Disney movies are wonderful. They have like different levels of meaning. And, and, and there are a lot of meaning for adults, not only for kids. If you want to see a wonderful description of the concupiscence, human sin, see the hunchback of Notre Dame. And the, 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 the bishop. If you want to see a, a wonderful description of structural sin, how sin affects society, Lion King. The hyenas and scar. And you want to see a wonderful portrait of grace. Mufasa. Simba. When Simba went to the lion's um, place. And Simba was expecting Mufasa to punish him. And Mufasa just played with him. So, but that's another sermon. Sorry, I went away. <laughs> but there is a movie that brings this, I think, to a good place. It's, it's Monsters, Inc. Have you seen Monsters, Inc.? There is this city, Monstropolis. A Monstropolis is a city powered by the scream of children. By fear and greed and selfishness. And this little toddler, toddler girl escapes from her room and gets to Monstropolis. And after a lot of experiences and, 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 and adventures, people in Monstropolis discover that there is a power Something more powerful than the scream of children, that, that, that fear and greed and selfishness. And what that is? Laughter. Gratitude. When, when, when we have gratitude in our hearts, laughter comes out naturally. So our lives, your life, and my life, we have discovered that the real energy that empowered the world and the universe is not selfishness, is not greed, is not fear, but the laughter that comes from gratitude because Christ saved us. Can you say amen? Amen. amen. I'm, I'm finishing. <laughs> I'm, I'm getting there. I'm getting there. <laughs> Laughter and gratitude are more powerful than selfishness and greed. And today, this morning, we live in faith and gratitude because of Christ. Today, when we are dedicating our pledge, to the ministry of this church. We are not only dedicating our finances to Christ. We are dedicating our life to Christ. Stewardship is not only money. Stewardship is the way in which we say thank you with the whole life so, in a while, you have the opportunity to pledge. And it is not something that you have to do. If you think that you have to do, sorry, Pastor, but you are in the wrong place. If you think that with what you give to church and life, you will have some kind of business with God, for your salvation, you are in the wrong place. We will do it. 
with laughter. We will do it with gratitude because we have been free from sin. And we have been freed for service to the neighbor and to glorify our God. Can we say amen? Amen. amen. God bless. Given that we don't have the screen this morning, I would invite you to just remain seated. And uh, given also that it is Christ the King Sunday and what the words we just heard from Pastor Javier, um, I find this song particularly appropriate for today. And it's called Who Am I? Am I that the Lord of all the earth would care to know my name, would care to know my hurt? Who am I that the bright and morning star would choose to light the way for my ever wandering heart? Not because of who I am, but because of what you've done. Not because of what I've done, but because of who you are. I am a flower quickly fading, here today and gone tomorrow. The wave tossed in the ocean. Paper in the wind, still you hear me when I'm calling. Lord, you catch me when I'm falling, and you've told me who I am. I am yours. I am yours. That the eyes that see my sin would look on me with love and watch me rise again. Who am I that the voice that calmed the sea would call out through the rain and calm the storm in me? Not because of who I am, but because of what you've done. Not because of what I've done, but because of who you are. I am a flower quickly fading, here to take and gone tomorrow. Wave tossed in the ocean. Vapor in the wind, still you hear me when I'm calling. Lord, you catch me when I'm falling, and you told me who I am. I am yours. I am Stand if you are able. Please join me in confessing our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, 
creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We have time now for the uh, prayers uh, to tell God what we need. To tell God what we are thankful of. So, if you have something to say to God, you want to include someone, a friend, family member, someone that you know in our prayers, please, please uh, tell us. Let's do something. When I say three, when I, I'm going to count to three. When I, when I say one, two, three, you, you uh, name the person aloud. Everything at the same time, okay? One, two, three. God, receive our prayer. Let us pray. Dear God, we give you thanks for Jesus Christ, who is our King. We give you thanks for so many things that you provide us. For the strength that you provide us in our difficulties. For the word that sustains us in sickness and in financial difficulties and in so many experiences that causes us pain. We give you thanks because our laughter is your laughter. Because your forgiveness is our freedom. Because your grace is our salvation. God in your mercy. Dear Lord, receive our prayers. Bless us always through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Holy God, the earth is yours and everything in it. Yet you have chosen to dwell among your creatures. Accept our pledges forgiven that will empower the next year of our ministry together. Come among us now in these gifts of bread and wine and strengthen us to be your body for the world through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. So we will have time to uh, come to the altar and bring us your pledges if you have them here. If you have something that goes there, you can also do it. And, okay, she knows more than I do. <laughs> has uh, cards if you want to fill one out. Again, it's online as well, so either or or both is all acceptable. We just want to give thanks for everybody who supports our ministries here. We also have the uh, food donation bin, which is really heavy already. Thank you, everybody. There's also, you can also just put it in Jean's car, which is outside. We just give thanks and take some M&Ms in celebration of manna and mercy. Thank you so much.
Please stand. My brothers and sisters, the Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to the disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Again after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. Jesus, our Lord, our King, whose body and blood is before us to eat, who gave us freedom, also taught us how to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. A feast of love is offered here for you and for all the saints. For our welcome, please eat and drink.
Jesus at this table. You have been for us both host and meal. Now send us forth to extend our tables and to share your gift until that day when all feast together at your heavenly banquet. And now God, the beginning and the end, who has written your name in the book of life, bless you and keep you in grace and peace from this time forth and forever in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. One, two. done by the saints before us. Go in peace and serve the Lord.
Fazendo. Be minus. No musicians were harmed in the playing of those songs. Thanks for being kind. I should be recovered from the turkey coma. 